So to begin with, this is what a room full of communication specialists look like. Really serious. But I do not come from this industry. My job is to make sure that there's a rocket launch here and then there's another firecracker that side. So I hope these guys take their claws out so I don't want them to be beautiful human beings because this is a very important topic and I'm sure the youngsters sitting here would be like, yes, somebody has to speak in our favor. What has been with us? What needs to be in our favor? So this is for the motion. This is against the motion, keeping it simple. And let's read. Do we need an education overhaul in... You get the idea. I will not ask you anything right now. Otherwise, we'll have a bias side of the room. But let's begin. By the way, if I forget your names, please forgive me. Like I said, not from the industry. Okay. So when I was asked to, you know, be the moderator, the first thing I did is get hold of these people who are your biggest stakeholders. Students, right? So what exactly do the students go through? I see a couple of them uh, having a good chuckle here. What do they go through, the whole process? And I asked them, and a couple of things came to my notice. And I will quote them exactly what they said. Let, let me start by questioning the cornerstone of this debate. So there was this one statement that stood out to me, though most of the students said the same thing, but this statement stood out, which said, the things we study in our college about PR and how a PR industry functions today are like two different worlds. Do you guys agree to that? I'll ask Dr. Paroma first. I'm not a doctor, okay? Okay, <laughs> you, you seemed, you, your Bob haircut gave you that aura, so I assumed so. I just have an aura anyway. <laughs> but anyway, thank you very much. Uh, so I, do, I have taught for about six years in Shivnadi University, uh, storytelling and personal brand. And before that, I have I had a long corporate career, about 25 years, with very large companies. And then now I work for Ashoka, but I don't teach. I advise on crisis and long-term reputation, and I'm attached to the board. So I am under no obligation to speak in favor of the motion. I actually, <laughs> given my students' feedback over all these years, one of the things that, and this is not self-praise, I hate self-praise like anybody else. One of the things that, because we, in Shivnadar, the dean and I made the curriculum up from scratch. And it was almost all practical stuff, like having people from industry speak about their experience, having communication experts, having business leaders, having uh, you know important brand stakeholders to talk about personal brand building and storytelling. And every student said that they liked this format so much more than classroom teaching because it actually taught them things in real life. And, uh, and at Ashoka, as you know, it is, it is an excellent center of learning. Uh, you know, we look at critical reasoning and experiential learning as such across all disciplines. So I'm turning this on its head. In disciplines like reputation, I don't even like calling it public relations. I think it trivializes things. And even in public affairs, you have to focus on actual experiential learning. I mean, you, can, you have the books, of course. But uh, if you depend on them, you won't get anywhere. You have to learn hands-on. You have to learn with your peers. You have to learn through industry training, uh, speaking to actual experts, through mentoring. There are a whole lot of learning tools are at your disposal. And that's what we need to do as practitioners for, for it to be, you know, any education uh, in reputation to be successful. Uh, it is not uh, textbooks that work. They've never worked. They particularly do not work now because the scenario is changing every six months or every three months. Did you, do you have a good textbook on how to apply AI in PR? No. You learn. So please focus on actual learning. So all curriculum, every learning tool has to be rethought, re-engineered, re-envisioned. Focus on that and then we will all get somewhere. 
That's all I had to say. <laughs> Thank you. Dr. Kulbeem. Uh, at the outset, my compliments to E4M, uh, Karan Bhatia, for conceptualizing these debates. Um, these are important conversations. We've had a conversation wherein uh, a panelist spoke about intent and action, and that begins the conversation for the motion. When I'm talking about education, skill development, competency building, and the entire ecosystem which defines uh, or configures education public in public relations today, I am looking at significant changes. Uh, our students of visual communication at University School of Mass Communication make uh, their understandings of wall art, street art every year. And a couple of days back, I was at MICA for another workshop, for another laboratory, AIs for Future. And again, the, the MICA's wall also had some forms of communication which were very telling. And the stories they told me, am I at loss? Am I employable? Do I have it in me? So student at the center of PR education is the biggest uh, common minimum denominator we need to arrive at. How to place the student at the center? You know, almost like an SIA framework. Student, industry, and academia need to collaborate for significant changes in understanding of how public relations education needs to be developed in terms of curriculum, in terms of pedagogy, in terms of practical delivery of concepts, theory, and work-based competencies. See, we are looking at today uh, trying to make students beyond just crammers. We are looking to evolve critical thinking through mentorship and capacity building. We're trying to make them innovative leaders here. We are all talking about thought leadership in public relations all the time. That's one topic everybody teaches as a module everywhere in public relations curriculum. But how to then invent inventively come up with a module for a framework towards thought leadership? Can it be really taught? How can it be mentored? Are we talking about world classroom teaching all the time? Are we talking about teaching on the ground, in the field, through the walks? Are we teaching about virtual or blended forms of learning? So teaching learning processes have to be integrative. Teaching learning process processes have to be cognizant of what the student wants. Let's not take students as people on which education has to be dumped down. Let's do with the top-down approach we've been doing, all of us, industry and academia, for the last two decades have been sitting together in all those you know, cushy uh, environments to create syllabi. It's time to bring another stakeholder in. A need assessment survey of the students also needs to be done at regular intervals. What kind of work-based competencies are you looking for? What kind of unclear conceptual understandings have they developed? And you know what? I'm not talking about industry versus academia here. Because most of us who've joined media, communication studies, public relations, advertising, and branding academics or education come from the industry itself. We joined long time back. Some of our colleagues are teaching at both places, even now. So there is no versus between industry and academia. Industry and academia need to come together for this overall. Come together to create an ecosystem, a framework, wherein we create a conscious student. We create a competent student. Conscious is also very important. Life skills are very important. We come from you know, having critical deliberations with the academia, wherein they try to get support, strength, understanding of ethics and values to integrate when they create campaign strategies, when they create crisis communication roadmaps. So that's very important. And the practical aspects of implementable skills or applicable skills in everyday situations in the public relations exercises, which they do for the organizations and clients is something they acquire as competencies from their industry leaders. So let us all converge and not look at diversionary or for that matter, you know, uh, uh, scattered way of looking at PR education. We've been doing that. We've been collaborating in the past as well. That's nothing new. But the collaboration has been lopsided. We need to come up with a bottoms-up approach with student at the center, with industry and academia as equal partners in this teaching, training, and research processes which are engaging, which are interesting to the students. They have a short memory, remember, these days. They have a short attention span. So how to create that critical learning environment? How to create a PR literate student today? And over to you.
for we have dr durba do you've summed up one entire question <laughs> nevertheless anything to add to that okay uh, good evening uh, my compliments to mr karan and the uh, e4m for creating such platform where um, all of us are getting a chance to meet interact and share our experiential outcome uh, i'll just uh, mention couple of points uh, where i mean kulbin has just concluded uh, i uh, from the classroom i land up in un job and uh, suddenly of course that time there were no digital but suddenly sitting in paris so my secretary told me that you have to dictate these minutes and it has to be compiled and send it across the head office i didn't understand what is this minutes and all that so i was totally confused so you are she was looking at me what actually i was going to speak to her so that was the kind of state of affair as a university topper but the kind of classroom engagements were given securing good marks i always feel proud i am a good marriage so there's lot of things i have achieved that time i realized i don't know nothing in life so to be very honest she not just not my secretary at that point time but she is the first guru who taught me all practical facets of managing communication in the development sector now coming back uh, i will just speak on my last 9 years of experiential uh, outcome which i have done in india today media institute we are part of the leading media house in the country and all all the media spectrum that we have so day one i am told that we cannot train uh, your people or your children so you make them uh, so much of competent and uh, with all skill sets so day one they have to deliver the result so uh, my first experiment i start uh, overhauling the complete curriculum six month they have to do internship in different branches every one and half month they have to shift it to different divisions depending on the kind of four choices they make entire six month they have to work and uh, one semester they have to study and the study part that i focus that uh, all the practical aspect like take an example in the pr uh, mr kapoor is here who will agree with me you will get lot of competent academically brilliant people but writing a press release or <laughs> something like you know you will find 100 kind of mistakes writing a appropriately a particular paragraph fitting into what clients need depending on the the clientele you are managing that is one number two as far as the pr education is concerned i found or what i've implement there are 25 seg micro segments of public relation now fashion communication or lifestyle pr to consumer relations to the financial pr to the it sec pr or uh, brand communication to uh, so and so forth uh, forget crisis man crisis communication and all that 25 micro segments so now you have to embedded in the curriculum in a way brief classroom but more practical synergy part so there are one semester more than 130 people comes for teaching so of course in a business pnl side he said you are all spending lot of money on that but i said yes i do because the children have faith in us they have come with an aspiration so what point i am trying to make if mr kapoor find three children i'm sending and said no they can deliver the result within no time that is called the outcome so education must be outcome based one number two although i was little surprised i was told to speak against but they're now speaking in favor or whatever but i will <laughs> i will just coin this terminology uh, skill sets and the curriculum part in an education institute is like a fish without water and we cannot withering away about the market or our stakeholder we need to uh, bridge that gap create a appropriate synergy because every child today whether they will speak it out or not but i'm telling you uh, 
I believe more than 11 batches have passed out, so I could, as a survey I, that I got, 99.9 .9 people come and join, they want a job. So, and today's contest, students are no more students. Even our case, uh, we used to call them trainees on provision because uh, everybody want, because they have invested and spent. So whatever you are teaching, it must give them a kind of uh, appropriate way so that they could find a better career path or a solution for them. Third part, the children are many, many times, the, they are just novice. They don't mar know much, even though they are very active in social media, but coming to the career front part. So you need to create a better synergy. So art of storytelling, writing, and third is absorbing more. And fourth, different micro segments, you do a call exper ex experiential learning or simulation exercises. This is how I have implemented in all the subjects and uh, creating a synergy. Of course, as a, being an industry, it is a benefit for me to bring all experts part. So 98% people come from the market. So what we do, the classroom is a kind of simulation. Like take an example, is a news anchoring. You can teach news anchoring. So through a simulation, you create a developmental aspect. So similarly, PR writing. Doctor, so I will writing. come back to you. Yeah. Let me okay. give them an opportunity. I'll, okay, fine. So I'm just concluding that. Uh, I will give you an opportunity to answer that in another question. Yeah. Okay. Thank awesome. You. Thank you. So let's start with you. Uh, so do thanks. you think we need an overhaul? Do you think the whole worry of well, I'm at loss and I'm unemployable actually a thing that people, that students actually think when they read the curriculum and they step out in the industry? Well, I think education in public relations is not in competition with skill development at all. Rather, you know, it provides the foundation on which practical expertise is built. So I feel, you know, I work with Indian Institute of Mass Communication and we try and give practical along with the theory. Uh, just for a small example, I was heading the Department of Advertising and Public Relations, and apart from teaching theories, uh, we tied up with Ministry of uh, Transport, and my students, they made a campaign for road safety. And they won a prize for one lakh rupees. So three groups, they, they were given a prize, uh, you know, we divided that one lakh rupees in those three groups. So it is, it is you know, I, I believe that comprehensive skill sets, they are already being taught, uh, you know, especially uh, the, uh, the place that I work in. And I feel that modern PR education, it is, you know, designed to cover both uh, theoretical and practical subjects because uh, ensuring students are, uh, you know, equipped with uh, core competencies in communication, in strategic thinking, in media relations, in uh, crisis management, and also, uh, you know, institutions, they are continuously, uh, they are evolving their curricula to include digital PR or, you know, data analytics or uh, social media strategies. So therefore, I feel that, you know, the current education system, it already integrates the necessary skills for the modern PR professionals. And I, I, I strongly believe that, you know, theory strengthens the practical skills because, you know, understanding theories of uh, communication of persuasion and you know public opinion they equip the PR professionals the budding professionals here uh, with the intellectual foundations to approach the real world challenges with uh, what are the nuances uh, of, of the same uh, while giving any hands-on experience is uh, it's valuable but theoretical knowledge also enables our students to craft more effectively, ethically grounded strategies. So a complete overhaul could undermine that balance, I believe, between theory and practice. It could also risk the production of uh, technicians, you know, uh, producing uh, technicians rather than critical thinkers because we believe in making critical thinkers. So I believe that instead of overhaul, uh, we should say it as adaptation. So I, I believe in adaptation Rather than calling it as an overhaul, the focus should be on adaptation and incremental updates to the existing curricula. Because PR professionals today, they need skills and, you know, um, they need skills in digital media, they need skills in ca content creation and data analytics and so on and so forth. So many educational institutes like IMC and others, of course, they are already responding to these changes. 
by you know incorporating new technologies they are incorporating new methods and continuous curriculum revision and adaptation will ensure the education remains relevant without the need of you know a radical shift or an overhaul okay. that's what i believe okay so you played double roles right yeah yeah I want to hear what you have to say. This is no. going to be interesting. Yeah, Please is, add some zing. Yeah, yeah, it is. Don't be politically right. No, no, I will. I will yeah, not be Samin, just yeah. look, look, just raise this point. We have to. <laughs> yes, so we tell people. There's how too to much write. of political correctness that's, that's yeah. been happening. Yeah, yeah. Please yeah. teach. People Feel free to how disrupt to write. the ground. Because if you don't no, read no, books, you no, don't no write. pressure. No pressure. Yes, at a all. lot of people no, are no banking on you to add some zing, some spice. No, no, no. Teach people to write. Yes, yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the point is, were they smartly written? No, they were not. Poorly. So they did not teach them how to give commands. So, so basically, right? they so were not. The point okay, is, they were smartly edited, or they were not. So I guess in many ways you're proving our point that it's not about what is in the curriculum, but what, how pedagogy or pedagogical innovations can lead to better AIs in future. There's nothing. And how can we, how can we integrate, you know, theory and practice both? So she is she is right now being very politically correct. I can figure it out. You go ahead. Please. Yeah, thank you for that. I'll I'll just give a caveat. Um, as we all know, Karan Karan called me up that I don't know. There are no people against the motion. You have to be against the motion. I don't know what you have to say. Just be against the motion. And as a true PR professional, many of you uh, know that uh, our, many of the clients gave us a brief that just make it look good. You know, irrespective of what the product is. I think uh, I'm going to do that job. Uh, I am against the motion, so uh, I don't think uh, we need an overhaul uh, because I'm speaking. I don't believe you. I'm sorry. His no. body language gives him away, does no, it? No. Karan Over has something to say. His Over body language gives him away. Overall is something, yeah, yeah. Overall is something, uh, you know, which you need. You change the entire course. I think incremental change is something that we should look at. I'll give you an example. Uh, one of the newly minted billionaire uh, by the stock markets uh, in India uh, was roasted oh. live uh, by a stand-up comedian. Uh, and he went by the practical aspect of PR. And he thought he will just tweet, and he will see that you know what what can a uh, you know a stand-up comedian do to him. Uh, the markets reacted. Uh, Five thousand crores were wiped out by just one one tweet, uh, and of course uh, you know the round two has just started. Now the point is that theory precedes practice. Uh, if he had read the fundamental theory of public relation, I think uh, he would not have reacted in a way. The only thing I'm trying to make is that when we say overall, overall is not needed. Like ma'am said, uh, IMC, uh, IP, and other colleges uh, where I teach, uh, there is a 90-10 ratio, which means in a two-year course, uh, that is 24 months, two months goes in for a, for a practical training. That means you have to do what is called an internship. right? So it's a 90-10 ratio. Uh, as I said, our job from a PR perspective is, can we make this 90-10 a little better? Sure. That's, that's the job, right? Uh, many of us are in a hurry to just get in what is the practical part. And uh, Parona ma'am gave a brilliant example on AI. Of course, there was no AI when we were reading all that. But the more we change, the more things tend to go back to the mean position, which means we will still need fundamentals. And a, a, a back to basics. The case in point is online media, right? What you talk about yourself is still seen as advertising. Correct. What others talk about you is seen as PR. I've seen a lot of uh, this yeah. happening right now. Yeah, I know right. everybody, what everybody does. That's right. That's right. So case in point is, let's say the e-commerce websites that have come in. There are a lot of brands that we have not even heard of. But we still go ahead and buy that brand is because how others have rated those brands. So we are looking at endorsement from third party to talk about. There are, we are in an era where people have stopped trusting mainstream media for whatever reasons, but they'll stress to people like you and me, which actually brings back to the point of public relations, right? And the theory part. Mm -hmm. So the aspect of an overhaul, because that's what the headline says, is overall is something that is needed? I don't think so. All colleges have already started doing a mix of industry and, of course, theoretical aspect. 
But without theory, it's like asking a doctor to go for robotics without understanding what the human anatomy is all about. And the second part is, and this I know, I, I teach at IMC as well, many of these professionals or students have not read any book on public relations. That is a any book. Satisfying. They only go by notes. They haven't read anything, period. <laughs> If you no, no, see, no, I will not say that. I if you see that. the way people write, I mean, Rajiv Vimani's statement when Jee. this unfortunate girl that's died, it, it. did you see the statement? That's we are all comms professionals here. It totally lacked in judgment, it Correct. totally lacked in empathy, Correct. it totally lacked in context. Correct. If you know how to write, that's a basic skill of a communicator. So please learn to write. That's right. And for that, you have to read. That's you right. don't read. That's right. You have something to add? All right. Uh, many thanks to EF, uh, E4M and uh, to Karan Bhatia. And, um, you know, not just physically, but I'm actually an outlier in the yeah. sense that I belong to <laughs> some other discipline, which is not really exactly PR. I teach political science, but I guess at some level we all converge in the sense that we all belong to liberal arts programs that exist in many places. And uh, any person who's doing PR would also like to take some breadth courses in other, uh, you know, social science, humanities disciplines. Uh, yes, well, uh, it's not only that I think I'm stuck with this motion. I actually enjoy being here, speaking against. And I, and I really, really believe there is no necessity of an overhaul. I will take the last statement first. You know, that was uh, spoken by Samir Kapoor on do our students read? Does anyone here who's a student, I'm, I'm not asking others, you know, who's a student has read Marcel McLuhan, has read The Art of Rhetorics, has gone back into the, you know, a, 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 into let's say examining a little bit of the Greek literature on rhetorics and from where you get the whole idea of what persuasion is. And then, you know, the entire communications builds upon, you know, the art of persuasion, the kind of words we use and how you use. And that is unthinkable, unachievable, unless and until you go back to that stage and have some in-depth training in some of these things. There is a, you know, and, and, and for that one needs to understand, you know, some of the classics. I rarely see students interested in classics. This is not a reflection on the students sitting here. Exactly. You all are going to be professionals, I'm sure. But you know, this is a reflection on my own students. You know, for instance, for the last two decades, I've been teaching in Delhi University, and I also, also taught abroad in Canada, in the US, and all that. And anywhere I've gone, I've found most of the students are just hung up on getting a set of readings and just doing the readings and never even bothering to go for the references as to where the source of this actual knowledge comes from. And so they don't even bother. And n many of my students, I'm very frustrated with them, and I tell them, they're unless and until may, you read may, this May, may I ask classics. you, and I, I would like to put the point here, do you think that we all come from a certain generation where references were from books and library while the times have changed? It cannot be the same pattern of education because we are in the AI times. Correct me here. So, no, no, no. I would, I would, yeah. So, I would like to, uh, I, I'll just complete the question. Maybe it'll give you better context. So, being currently in the world of AI, the change that happens is so quick and so volatile that I, this is something that has come up that is the industry keeping up? Yes, because it's business generating. But is the educational system keeping up with that dynamic change, do you think? So there are two points to it. Number one, the debate has to be broad based. A, it should not be metrocentric. All the examples of USMC, of IIMC, of MICA, and other such institutions which are being brought forth, that you know curriculum uh, revisions are a continuous process, that we're looking at examination, evaluation, or delivery, pedagogy, in a more flexible way all the time. These are metropolitan. We have more than 800 institutions in this country, public, private, and others, who are imparting public relations education education in the country. There, the stagnancy, the redundancies lie and are very, very obvious. So whenever I go visit various institutions in India and outside India as well, one major gap which I find, and this is not a question, it's about praxis. This is not a question about, you know, skills and the theory and the practical skills. It is about the way 
we integrate theory significant changes in not just the curriculum the curriculum revision is only one aspect it's about pedagogical innovation are we able to deliver which engages the student to learn co-learn co-participate and then convert the intent to action which the previous panel was talking about that's number so, one number two again we have to talk about this particular aspect of you know are we uh, you know deeply engaging with readings are we deep, deeply engaging with reference materials that is where it is the sources of data the sources of information has to be integrated in the way we impart education so please do not take it as theory versus practice it's about integrating but the educational overall is required in the ways we mechanize the ways we implement this marriage of theory and practice otherwise the gaps remain so from what i understand you're saying serve the dish just plate it better no serve the dish plate it, it plate it design it lay out it better so that the the students can adopt it and can actually absorb accept all of it. it it's very important for the students to accept it they should not be re reluctant acceptors you know the minute we say are we teaching them understanding media extensions of man has anybody read marshall mcluhan understanding media how am i going to serve understanding media the way i will make sure that they read understanding media extensions of man is my victory as a communication teacher what do you have to add paroma you know, the thing is that I'll throw all of this out of the window. Uh, I mean, people just, no, not you, I mean, as such. People have to read. I mean, it's as simple as that. Uh, no one cares whether you read from a book or a magazine or a device or anything, your, your smartphone, just read. When I was at Google, I had a standard test of people who came to interview, even agencies. Tell me the day's headlines without looking at anything, and 95p out of 100 will fail. If you don't have a new sense, if you don't have awareness of your environment, what are you doing in communication? It has nothing to do with whether we overhaul the curriculum or something. It's a basic skill, please read. Yes. What do you have to add? We kind of wavered from there, but what do you have okay. to add? Uh, I believe uh, we have suddenly taken in a different process. Yes, it's, it's going uh, in different uh, yeah. direction. See, uh, theory, practice, everything has to be embedded part. So skill doesn't uh, tell you that you get rid of uh, reading, get rid of uh, basic fundamental things. So that is already there. There is no question about it. My only point is simple thing. In a new world order, this is the title is saying, in a new world order when we have started accepting AI, or the chart GPT or even the different uh, new latest developments in the Microsoft or something, technologically, academically, or practically, what exactly the market perspective is, uh, is, is intended to have, and our stakeholders, what exactly students need to learn and train. And uh, uh, I agree with Mr. Kapoor, that's just balancing that sort of academic plus the uh, training composition must be embedded properly. So we are, we should not take it other way. Overall doesn't mean that you get rid of everything what is going on. Whatever is with us, it's good. But let's build it up, bridging the gap and creating more synergy and innovation, bringing innovations. I believe we are living in an experiential world. Everything is experience. So there's nothing other than, is there no marketing, nothing, e-commerce, whatever you call, everything is experiential. So education also have to be experienced. And finally, I would say, whatever you, you can uh, say, but I humbly tell you, last six years I have shown 100% my children are employable. I believe my curriculum is best. So, so your, 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 that's your personal experience, but we are a very big industry. No, no, agreed. I'm talking about from the UN perspective, because I have worked in UN. Yes. I'm talking about the, in, the international perspective. The Absolutely. Multi, the multinational culture that we are now having, or the corporate world, all our stakeholder I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So it is not that me, whatever. No, no, type. but we're talking about the, everybody might not be lucky enough to come under your umbrella. No, no, no. I'm not <laughs> saying me. I'm saying, see, what, what my colleague, you know, Kulvin point out. So please uh, learn from there. We, the academic people, creating a synergy. It's a fusion. Mm -hmm. And bringing everything to that ecosystem, we have to decide 
want, what kind of treatment you are going to make. Uh, so, that so I, I have a feeling we should have you on this side. We should get Samir this side. Okay. I have a feeling. Would you like to switch places? <laughs> <laughs> no. <I'm good>. no? <laughs> I have a feeling that no, no, there no. are four people against the motion and no. two for the motion. No, 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 I no, guess no. Dr. Drubo is saying almost the same thing that it's about breaking the educational hierarchies. Let's do away with the hierarchies. Let's do away with the top, top to top approach, top to bottom. Let's go in for a bottoms up. Right? Let's create a vertical integration of ideas, of concepts, of training, and also training the trainers. It's very important. We as, you know, people in the academia, we also need to constantly build up our capacities. Yes. To be able to then deliver something which is based on work-based com competencies, PR special skills, and ethical frameworks of building consciousness amongst the students. So this is something which goes hand, hand in hand. No mutually exclusive categories, please. So now so that we're not mutually uh, exclusive, yeah, on, you can switch sides. On your, on your question, yeah. I just have a point because you mm -hmm. asked whether they are reading or AI is yes. helping us. Uh, the, of course, some of the answers have been given on the practical side. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Musk bought Twitter, now X, at a value of 44 billion US dollars. Right? The most read English newspaper across the globe, most revered is New York Times. Yes. Uh, if, you, if anyone has seen the building, it's one of the best location that you can ever get. Uh, brilliant printing presses, brilliant press, brilliant building, many editors. The valuation was 1.5 billion. Yeah. Right? So with all the editors, all the infrastructure, every asset that you can think of, the valuation they got was 1.5. Twitter with no editor, with uh, you know, no great, great name. Of course, a lot of technicians and Mr. Parakwari being there, all those elements that were being put there oh, was 44. No, sorry, no, sorry. Yeah, not part. <laughs> I think Infosys is still. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, point I'm trying to make is that, and the panelist also said that, irrespective of the medium that you are choosing, uh, the next generation is always better than the previous one. Charles uh, Charles Darwin theory of evolution says that. Uh, whether you are reading it from AI or you are reading it from Kindle or you are reading it from uh, Google News or wherever you are reading it, uh, in short, please read. That's the fundamental thing. As I said, fundamental remains the same. It's the medium that, that changes. Okay. That's also what I want to emphasize on because I, I personally feel that theory is important to read. Again, reading is important here. But I agree with her. Reading is important. But theory is important to read. You just can't say that, you know, just go up and, you know, just start working as a professional. So we are trying to integrate theory and practical. Suppose, you know, some of my students are here. So if they are learning PR in class, also from an academician like me, also from an industrialist, uh, you know, uh, a working professional like Samir, he comes to our class, he gives practical experiences, he gives case studies. We practical... We, we practically do, you know, uh, study some sources and write case studies. What is happening in the world? Where are the mergers happening? Where, are the, where is the industry growing? So all that skills, all those case studies, all that practical, we are trying to integrate. And, you know, to what Gulbeen said, uh, like we are, uh, you know, not talking only about IMC or only about, uh, you, you know, University School of IP. I feel that what we are doing we should try and preserve our academic integrity and professional standards, our rigorous standards. Let us be, you know, the trendsetters and the other institutes all over India who are not doing this, they will see that how our, you know, students are employed or how well they are groomed. And of course, they will also follow the suit. So I personally believe that uh, we need, uh, you know, and not an overhaul, but a holistic development of the student who understands the theoretical components, who understands the practical aspects, and uh, develops his skill according to the you know, uh, industry, whatever industry is demanding. It's such a big industry now. Uh, Jyoti sir just said that my students are all employable. The media and entertainment industry is 2.3 trillion industry. There are so many verticals. The person who has studied communication, he or she will not be jobless, sir. Everybody is going to be employed. It's such a big industry. Uh, it, it, we feel that, you know, there are no jobs, but there is no dearth of jobs. They, they will be employed. It, it is just like a question, you know, uh, communication came first or relationship came first. So theory is important or skill is important. So 
unless and until PR professionals understand that relationship goes hand in hand with communication. Similarly, you have to understand that theory goes hand in hand with practical and you cannot do away with one and just learn the practical aspects of it. Theory is the foundation. You have to have that grounding. You have to read it. And only then you move into the industry. And uh, there are good people like Karan and others, you know, who will handhold the children or who will handhold our students when they, you know, reach that stage of entering that industry. They will learn there. I'm sure their experiences of reading, their experiences of theory, as well as practical learning in the class will help them specifically to, you know, grow in the industry. You know, I'm going to debunk that myth. After interviewing for 25 years, I don't think uh, everybody gets jobs. Everybody does not deserve to get a job. I don't think all students are employable. And now I'm not saying that X is to blame or Y is to blame. But we will be very delusional if we think that every, all students who, who are part of the industry, getting, let me finish, are going to get jobs. No, it's simply not true. And on an average, if, if I say about out of 10 people you speak with, maybe two are worth hiring. So in my okay, class, so, I, so I just want to, I just want to the practically... The thing is that why, why um, is it I, so? I just want to practically okay. give you he, an example. He wants to add something, I've heard less from him. That uh, I was heading the Department of English Journalism last year where I had 70 students. Four of them went to, you know, pursue their masters, but 62 of them could get a very good job. I would only say that let's not reduce right. education to employability. Let's make empathy, endurance. Every student is special. Let's try as an educationist, as a curriculum, as a program, try to identify skills, competencies, efficiencies, and desires, needs and motivations in each student within that program, and then hone them together as industry and academia, we'll be able to cultivate those skills. They'll have durable careers. They won't be able to say workplaces are toxic after two and three years. They will be able to have longish 20, 25 years of healthy work environments. Yeah, okay, cool. Happy I, I have a question that has been asked for. and I want to ask, let's see who answers that. This came from a student which, uh, which is, what if time like COVID comes again? How will you ensure that students get skill development? Anybody no. else? I think I would want Samir to answer this. Okay. Yeah, so uh, God forbid if the time like COVID comes again, but we are living in uh, very difficult times. So uh, skill development, for example, again, uh, will come to the fact that you will be uh, dependent on digital to ensure that that kind of uh, technology imparts knowledge and skills to you. Uh, just look at the way the entire industry exploded. A lot of industry exploded only on that. Uh, Zoom, uh, of course, from a stock market's perspective, uh, went on an all-time high because everyone came on Zoom. Everyone realized that what it actually means. Uh, nanotechnologies were imparted. EdTech uh, saw a major boom. And then we had one of our players going up and down at the same time, uh, right, uh, in, in four years. Uh, but uh, otherwise, I think uh, the skill development will be imported using technology, but the fundamentals, as I'm saying, Isn't will it? still remain the same. You, are the, you guys are the most collaborative group, you know that, right? Do you, there's a I diagram would, going on uh, here. I, 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 I back to uh, defer. I, I back to you, you back, yes, you I'm, I, 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 no, no necessity I'm, I'm, for any overhaul. No, 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 no. What I wanted to say, I mean, there, there are two things that I want to really stress upon. Knowledge cannot be chasing either the logic of the market or the determinism of technology. Sorry. I'm like, I'm, I, you know, we can use new technologies as examples in the already Technology existing is a friend. curriculum. No, but it has to be, and, do you think and, it has and, to be example or integrated? Technology is neither a master nor a servant, it's a friend, yes. number one. It does not determine how the societies progress, despite McLuhan saying okay. technological Come determinism. Come back to you, what do you have to no, say? No, no, However, I, I just wanted to complete this by saying that, well, I'm like, let's see, for instance, you know, I used to teach a course on ethics and politics. Then I switched over and changed the curriculum to ethics and governance, teaching about the new emerging technologies and all. But then the core, foundational part of that still remains, and then we try 
apply it in certain contexts and then say, okay, because you know, we are in the fourth industrial revolution and we'll see a fifth one. But many of those theories and that thinking, that core thinking will hardly change. Second, no, the second point I want to make is that if you're talking about the problem solving skills or even the uh, you know, critical thinking skills or you know, creativity and all those, they come with diversity of your education and the depth of that education. Yes, depth and is very, is, very important. And this is on, on which we build upon many professional successes. Okay. Okay. But no, I agree. I just want no, no, to... You guys get heated up now and no, we have no, no time. I have a, I have I a point. To, I'm sorry. I'm I just sorry. want to add that this depth comes from reading. This depth comes from theory. This depth comes from traditional models. Now we are working... Uh, and I, this depth I, along also? with my colleague Albert, we are working on persuasion uh, communication model. So we are referring to Aristotle's model. We are referring to Chanakya. We are referring to persuasion models. And, you know, we are trying to integrate how, we are trying to see how those models, the traditional models are being implemented in the current day industry. So it comes from the depth. Okay. It comes I, I from the I'll give it to Paloma. She has model. something to put across. Yeah. First of all, knowledge does not exist in a vacuum. Okay, so technology, knowledge. You have for, one minute to wrap up because yes. we're almost this done. Is, knowledge no, no, for knowledge I have, for I have the a sake. point, Ravi Sai. Yeah, you let have me to, just finish. Yeah, please, please, please. Knowledge does not exist for the sake of knowledge. It has to be harnessed and it has to be made useful. So I don't agree. So technology, yes, I completely agree with you, is a friend. It's, it's a friend and it's a force, but that needs to be harnessed. Technology for the sake of technology, in my class, out of 45 people, I had to flunk 40 because they wrote the same letter using ChatGPT. So <laughs> you have to harness technology. Okay, Dr. Durva, what do you have to add to that? See, you have I, to. I, I have an objection now, just now being said that side is collaborative. We all are collaborative. No, I said no, you no. guys are the most collaborative see, group. See, see. The, the need, need part, so what, we, what we exactly uh, we should thrust upon as a, either an academician or industry, we should holistically evaluate, create a 360 mod degree model in terms of what is the okay. outcome, uh, having the kind of core conceptual framework of whether it is theoretical perspective or primary reading level or whatever you can call it. It's a fine tuning with an innovative mind. So that actually we need to work on that part. We are not against of this thing. We, skill development doesn't mean you get rid okay, of... Uh, okay, okay. I, I get you now. The time's up. And honestly, how many of you... See, they're all academicians, most of them. And the one that we have, he's stuck on this side. I really... But, but there's a mix and blend, right? So they have been very politically correct. Let me be very honest. I had an opinion of my own, but I tried to keep my mouth shut. So I do agree to the fact that you need to read, you need the content, but there's a skill set that I believe needs more attention. How many of you actually feel that an overhaul is needed and reading cannot be the answer to that? I mean, reading is needed, but there's more skill set required. Am I right? And how many of you think AI is well integrated as much as it needs to be like data, data analytics or anything of that no. sort? You, we have it in our syllabus. Pedagogy. We have data journalism. We, we just did a workshop last That's week. That's my point. They are the creme de la creme of the on colleges. On data scraping, on data journalism, on data analytics, on AI, we have it integrated in our syllabus. We have and integrated we make in it a point. Creme de la creme. We make creme it a point creme. that it you is should executed have the last and implemented. Word. You haven't spoken. I think as a moderator, a really good moderator, <laughs> and if that's, you that's should talk. Too much pressure. No, no, you should just talk and have the last word. So the only <laughs> suggestion that I had was from students. That is, though, I just reached out to as many communication students and I happened to meet to here as well. And they literally said, and I quoted the first line, which was something that is a shocker to me. A lot of them said this, that PR education versus PR industry are a major disconnect. Because when yes. you go and function on the ground level, it's different. Yes. That yes. being said, they said there's too Agreed. much that happens yes. because Agreed. the world is blurred today. It's not just PR, it's social media. It's Somebody said, we spend a semester writing on press release. Can't we be taught a smarter way to write a press release where the chat GPT is integrated and we can check every parameter? And I was like, that makes sense. So coming down to it, this selective overhaul that they are saying, I am not for the comms industry, but I'm sure they are all masters in their field. So thank you so much. And getting the clause out at the last minute, it made it entertaining. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so thank much. You so much. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, you are. I, 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 I,
I would request you all to please stay back, okay? Don't run off the stage. And a big thanks to Karan. I think this is an interesting format. We need to work on it. But Karan, thank you for thinking of this. But Karan, I have a request. Next time you get, get all professionals who are only working in industry and get all the academicians and then see the fireworks. <laughs> you, you did the wrong thing. They were like, what do I even say? And you guys can manage the crisis. You could have gone politically incorrect. You have read it. But you guys did not. Discussions are more fruitful. After completing session, I want to learn one thing from you. What do you mean by that politically correct? I don't know. Ask some video, I'll tell you. That's okay. So, not being from the communication also helps. Learning from the school of life teaches you what is politically correct and incorrect. Wonderful. Can we have a round of applause for our moderator as well as for our debaters here?